Let's bring this internet display project to an end. Once I was done soldering all the components to the main processing PCB, I realized that I accidentally mirrored the ESP module while creating the board layout. So I had to solder it in place from the back, in order to make it work. Not a fatal mistake, but a bit annoying. Before bringing the module into its final position though, I firstly flashed the firmware 1.3 onto it. This means I had to connect GPIO0 to ground, chip power down to VCC and power it all with a 3.3V power source. Then I switched my FTDI module to its 3.3V logic level modes and hooked up TX to RX and RX to TX. There are plenty of pictures on the web which showcase this circuit. I uploaded the new firmware with the help of the given flash software and afterwards removed the wire from GPIO0 to ground to check whether the update was successful. This can be done quite easily with the help of the Arduino serial monitor. But as you might have already noticed, we use quite a fast baud rate here, which can be a problem with my relatively slow level shifter, aka voltage divider. It would be the best to change the baud rate to 9600 and store it all in the flash memory, so that it stays that way even after a restart. Moving on. Since I already have 4 PCBs with TLCs, I only need 4 more homemade perf boards which forward power, data and distribute the TLC outputs 8-15 to, to the display. For that, I marked the length of the 7 segment display onto each perf board and used my scroll saw to make the cuts. Afterwards, it is pretty much the same procedure as in part 1. That means I created nice looking 9 pin female headers which I soldered onto the TLC boards and then the perf boards. After plugging the displays into place, they should all fit together in a straight line without showing any remarkable PCB overhangs. And for a continual work style and a better overview, I also numbered them from left to right. I repeated this numbering later on for the displays as well to always be able to match them accordingly. Then I created and soldered 16 pin female and male headers between the first intersection of TLC and perf boards and 8 pin female and male headers for the second intersection. I repeated this madness until all the boards were connected with each other and immediately ripped it all apart again in order to wire up the perf board. The wire I used is solid 0.75 square millimeter and is basically left over from another project, but it worked just fine. And if you are completely confused by now which wire connects where, you can find pictures, the schematic, parts list and everything else that is important on Instructables. Link is in the description. Once the four perf boards were complete, I start to solder the few necessary components for the three remaining TLC boards in place. And finish those as well by pushing a jumper on the J2 interruption which allows the TLC to receive data from the previous TLC. The first main processing board though needs a jumper on the J4 interruption to receive the serial data from the Arduino. Now that all the hardware should be complete, I assembled the construction and used my multimeter with its continuity function to check whether there really is a good electrical connection from start to end. Afterwards, I plugged in my 9V 2A power source and measured around 120mA, which seems legit. So I connected my Arduino Uno to the microcontroller in this configuration and plugged in all the displays. For the first test, I simply uploaded a TLC example sketch which should simulate the Knight Rider light, and it seems like it works. But if a segment does not light up properly, just reinsert the TLC into its socket. Sometimes there are connectivity problems. Now in order to present large numbers, we need a bit of programming. So I created a function which firstly counts the number of digits in my entered integer, stores each individual one in one spot of an array and then switches on the necessary outputs of the TLC to create the complete number on the display. And if it's over 1000 or 1 million, I also activate the decimal points for an easier viewing. I also created a similar function to display degrees Celsius, which is just a bit more complex. 
and by now you should have noticed that this is not the easiest code. To avoid frustration, I recommend to start with a bit simpler project regarding the programming. Now to receive data from the web, I used a pre-made code by Karen Dara who did an excellent job of this. Check out his video about it if you haven't seen it yet. But let me give you a small summary. By using ThingSpeak, I can create a Thing HTTP where I can insert the address of the website with the data and the parse string which is the X path of the exact object I care about. With the generated link, I get an abridged version of the complete data of the site which is searched through in the code in order to find keywords which mark the information we want. This is then stored and after a bit of conversion, I can display the numbers. This method can be applied to many websites and the code seems to work nicely after I changed a couple of commands which were outdated due to the firmware updates. At the end, I only have to figure out how to mount it to the wall. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.